production. I, no, I controlled it. I did that. I sold eggs. I, uh, I tried a cleaning business. I did some marketing services. And all those businesses failed. And then at one point, what did I decide to do? I said, well, you know, I'm going to go back to the farm. But not because my mom is at the farm. But because after feeling a lot, sometimes it's good to go start all over at zero. Because then you have like a fresh mind. Then you can, you can fail small. You can smart, start small and then try to grow. But with the experience that you had from what you lived before. So when I came on the farm, I started growing uh, eggplants. Who knows eggplants? You like them? Yeah. I produce and eat my own eggplants. So what happened, when I started producing the eggplants, I started also walking around the farm. Our farm is around 150 acres. It's two hours away from the sea. And uh, while I was walking around the farm, I discovered some places that no one would go. My parents wouldn't go there, the workers wouldn't go there. It was like this open space, very nice, but no one would go. And then I started thinking, well, how can we maximize this place? How can we make it more profitable? That's when the idea came for tourism. I said, well, how can I integrate tourism in a farm? How can I make a farm become a place where people can come and have fun? People can come and camp. People can come and fish. People can come and go hunting. Maybe even discover other places around the farm. So I started with the little resources I had. I started you know, breaking things down, building some stuff up. And after two years, I ended up founding the first agro-touristic site of my country. I've had more than 500 visitors from 40 different countries who have come to Guinea to visit my farm, which is, uh, you can show the next picture. She's an American. She's a Peace Corps volunteer from, uh, she was coming from Gambia. She was doing her service in Gambia. And since I'm partnering with Peace Corps, they usually come on my farm. She came, and uh, she, this is the wall of dreams. I call it the wall of dreams, where if painters or artists come, they have a place where they can, they can play around. But this is not the, the, the business that I'm selling. This is just what brought me here. What I do is help people do what they're supposed to do, but afraid of doing. You all want to be entrepreneurs. You all have ideas. Maybe some of those ideas are going to change with time. You're all going to fail. You're going to fail hard. You have to be ready for that. But in that farm, I had a vision. I had a vision that I was going to interview the President Obama three years ago. How, from a farm, can you have a vision of being with uh, the number one president of the world? It's crazy, right? It seems crazy. But that vision brought me to do something more than just the agriculture. We're developing entrepreneurs, and we train around 2,000 young people, the same entrepreneurship course. And after training with them, we found out that they were lacking creativity. They were lacking hope and lacking finances. Then we decided to create a movement called the Dare to Innovate <coughs> Movement. The Dare to Innovate Movement for Social Entrepreneurship. To be able to engage those young people who had entrepreneurship skills to go to the next level of becoming responsible social and economic leaders in the community where they will think, just like you, of social problems that exist and find business models and also how to pitch, how to sell themselves, how to sell their ideas and find partners and investors so that they can build their businesses. 
And last year, we organized the first conference for social entrepreneurship on the farm, where I created the Dare to Innovate Center for Excellence in Social Entrepreneurship and Human, and human Development. It's the first center of human development in sub-Saharan Africa, like French-speaking Africa. And last year, we had 20 young entrepreneurs who came to the farm and were trained in social entrepreneurship. And then there was a competition where they had to pitch their ideas to the panel of judges. Seven businesses were funded last year. The first one created public bathroom for people riding on the road, traveling out of the country. Because his idea was that when they're traveling out of the country and you have diarrhea, there's nowhere to go. You have to go in the bushes. That was his business idea. Another one thought of what? He said that uh, people who raise cows, how do you say that in English? Cattle farmers, ranchers. ranchers. Cattle farmers, ranchers. In my country, those who raise cows, they're always moving around. Because when it's dry, they go to one area. When it's the rainy season, they go to another area. So they're moving around, and the women don't have time to raise their children in one same area. So you have problems with education. And if they, if they get sick, let's say they're far away from the city, there's also problems of having access to help. So this young man was a veterinarian. And what did he want to do? He said, I'm going to go, I'm going to bring help to them. So his business was the first mobile veterinary clinic of Guinea. This year, the same conference is in its second edition, and we finished uh, taking in the, the candidates this 30th of June. So the conference will be next month, in August, where we're gonna have the best young entrepreneurs of Guinea who are gonna come again to my center to be able to have this other training and have the opportunity to get funding. If I had given up, when people started telling me that I couldn't make my first dream happen, I wouldn't be helping other people make their dreams come true. But now, what I want to do is go to a higher level, not just limited to Guineans. I want to be able to go and inspire people in South Africa. I want to be able to go and inspire people in Kenya, people in Ghana where there's other young people just like you and me and him and them who also have these ideas. But what they're lacking, they're lacking. You, can, you need to identify them, you need to find them, you need to inspire them, and you need to invest in them. <clears throat> so that's my business. I want to be able to catalyze an environment and culture innovation, social entrepreneurship, and excellence. So if any of you are ready to invest yourselves, your resources, your partnerships to make this happen, I invite you to come with me on this journey to make Africa a continent of innovators, where innovators from around the world can come innovate, make value, make impact. Thank you. If you have any questions. Okay, so um, um, assuming that you do get the funding, where do you see your company going in the next 10 years? The next 10 years, I would be organizing programs like YALI, whereas I would find the best talent in the sectors of health, technology, agriculture, food security, ocean agriculture, and bringing them to different African countries where they would get the highest level of training and we would be put in a network where they could have resources and partners to be able to develop what they're doing. I would have an e-learning platform that would be well developed, where 
as universities from across the world can collaborate, students like yourselves and professors could give conferences online. We could have, for example, a course like this while you study at the same time as high school students from other countries. Um, what range of age of kids do you work with? Do you work with like high school students, people in college, or what type of people? The people I range are between 15 and 35. Okay. But who are aspiring to leadership, who want to lead, want to make change happen. Do they only come from Guinea, or are they from other African countries as well? I'm a global citizen. Oh. So an American, Chinese, a Japanese, a South American, uh, an African. For me, it's how to connect. I'm starting, I started from my farm, I went to my region, I went to my country, now I want to go to the African continent, and with social media, I can touch the whole world. So the goal is to bring people together. Africa is the continent where there's lots of resources, and where everybody's going right now. So it's the real place where even you guys can be able to Obama, yeah, uh, exactly. The funny thing is, we were there were 50,000 applicants for this program. And uh, I had, during this conference that we did last year, the president, no, the ambassador of the United States came, the ambassador of the United States in Guinea, came to my farm, and uh, he had a PO officer, public affairs officer, who told me about this program. And for me, the thing that I needed to do to get there was to do a mass innovation initiative where I would try to train 10,000 people in entrepreneurship technology so that the whole country would have trainers and trainers and trainers and trainers of training. But I applied for this program and I was selected amongst those 50,000 people. And I'm also selected, there's 100 of those 50, of those 500 who are staying for an internship. And then when we arrived here, they selected, I think, 18, 18 fellows to do a video that would be uh, projected at the presidential summit that's coming up next month, where the 47 presidents of Africa are going to be received at the White House. And then they selected me again to go for a, a discussion at the White House. So it's just getting closer and closer and closer. And closer. So finally, maybe I will interview him. And even if I don't, you just have to dream big. You know, and sometimes you end up not having what you want, but having better. So I'll, I'll, what do you want me to say to Obama? <laughs> uh, someone woke up and I said that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. And I, I wish you all good luck for your, your, your projects. And uh, uh, don't give up. Don't give up, don't give in. I mean, if you want to make change happen, you start where you are, and you go hard on it. Because no one's going to let you, no one's going to do it for you. Don't even expect for someone to, to come and do it for you or make it easy for you. You have all the resources that we don't have, and uh, it will be, it'll be a shame if someone with all these resources said, oh, well, I don't know what I'm going to do or how I'm going to make it happen. But think about those who, like us, we had to go through a hard, resourceless, difficult thing to get our dreams to come true. Well, you have lots of opportunities that are available, but just that.